Uh, saved views in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations are great for sharing customizations to forms or commonly used grids used across several people in your organization. So you can use them to easily communicate information that your users need to see. You can use them to um, display information that needs to be used on a regular basis by a large group of people. And more importantly, you can standardize the way people use uh, some standard screens in, in Dynamics. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to create those views. I'm going to show you how to save them, and I'm going to show you how to uh, share them with a group of users, individual users, or uh, users who belong to a specific security role. So my name is Kaylee Acuna. I am a solution specialist at Encore Business Solutions, and I will be walking you through this process today. All right. You'll see my screen in front of me here, and we're going to start off by navigating just to one of the standard grids that you see in Dynamics. So for my example, I'm going to use all sales orders. This is a really commonly used grid in the system. A lot of people go here. Um, it's, it's used almost universally across uh, all businesses. Um, and, and first, we're going to start off by adding a column that might be useful. So. Out of the box, you can see there's the standard view. It's got your typical uh, sales order number, customer account number, customer name, et cetera. If there was information that you needed to see across many sales orders without having to drill into each individual one, you can bring that column into this grid. And to do that, in the top navigation bar here, you see there's these column headers. This looks very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. And similar to an Excel spreadsheet, you can actually right click on this bar up here, and you can click on Insert Columns. I'm actually going to make this a little bigger so we can see. OK, so when I click Insert Columns, you can see the first thing that pops up is this menu here. This is a list of all the available columns that we have in this particular grid. Some grids are going to be different. Not all grids are going to have the same options. But from here, we can um, filter and find the field that we want to add. So for my example, I'm going to add uh, just a created date. So I'm going to sort this list by A to Z so that it's easy to find. And I'm going to go ahead and just add the created date and time for sales orders, because let's say we want to see things in order of when they're recreated. So I'm going to go ahead and select this checkbox and I'm going to click update. Awesome. So once we've inserted this column, you can see if I scroll to the right, it's now added as part of my grid. So this grid is now now has the created date and time. If I wanted to be able to save this view in order to have it have this created date and time in the future, I would go over here to this standard view drop down and I would select um, this little carrot here and I would click save as. So a pop-up is going to say, what do you want to call this view? It defaults with my view. You can change this to be um, something with your name, or in this case, we're just going to call it um, sales order grid. And I'll put my initials there so I can find it. And then we can toggle this to say pin as default view. Once we say yes, we click save. It'll ask if you want to apply this to all legal entities. For my example, I'm going to say no. And then we're going to go ahead and see this view every time we navigate to this grid. So if you don't do this, current only, and save. So if you don't save your view, if you were to navigate away from this grid and come back, this added column would no longer be here. Something else to note, every time you add a new column to a grid, it automatically puts it on the far right of the grid. So if you need that to move closer, maybe to the left hand side where you're seeing your main core of your data, you can always grab the column here. If I highlight over create a date and time, we can hover over these four little dots to the left hand side of the column name. And you can see when I hover over it, the four arrow cursor appears. If I click and hold this, I can now drag this column to whatever position I need it to be in. So you can see I dragged it to be next to invoice account. And so now this created date and time is positioned in the middle of the grid. When you make changes like this to your grid, make sure to save those changes so that they're present the next time you come into this grid. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select my custom view that I made and I'm going to click save. 
Now, next time I come in here, it'll have that created date and time just in the middle. So that's how to create a view. The process is the same whether you're in a grid or whether you're drilled into a specific transaction. So for example, if I click into one of these sales orders, it's gonna pull up the standard sales order view. If there was a field that you needed to add to the sales order for your users or for your group of users um, to make their day-to-day -day activities a little bit easier, the process is very similar. So if I were to add a field, let's say to this top section here, this header, I can go ahead and right click and I click personalize sales order header. When I do that, it's gonna pull up a menu and I'm gonna click add a field. So similar to in a grid, when you right click and say insert column, we're gonna right click and add a field. Similar to the grid view that we saw earlier, it's gonna pull up a list of all the available fields that you can add to this form. Now it's gonna be not necessarily the same as what's available in the grid. Not all fields can be shared in all places, but you can see there's there's quite a few to choose from. So you can dig through this list and see what you wanna add. For my example, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the created date and time. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna select it here and I'm gonna click update. Now it's gonna add this created date and time field to my sales order details view. And I wanna save this view now. So uh, just like we saw in the grid, if I go up here to the upper left-hand corner of the sales form, you can see there's a My View dropdown. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and I'm gonna click Save As. And I'm gonna change the name of this view to be Sales Order Detail. And I'm gonna add my initials again, just to make it really clear. I'm gonna set it as my default view, and I'm gonna make sure it only affects this current legal entity. And click Save. Now, every time I come into this sales order details form, it's gonna have this created date and time present here. So now that we've created a couple of saved views, we're gonna walk through how to share, AKA publish or copy a saved view. So this is if you have a, a user who's maybe created a really useful view and you wanna take that view and share it with other users. So to do that, um, we're gonna navigate to the system administrator module and we're gonna go under personalization, setup and personalization. This is something of course that needs to be done by someone who has access to the system administration module. So from here, we're gonna go into the personal views tab. You can see here, it's the third one down on the left-hand side. If I click on personal views, I should be able to see all of the custom views created in the system. So we should be able to find the one that I specifically made either by searching for the owner name or the view name. If you recall, I added my initials to the view name so I could search this way and find my views and you can see it pulls them both up. So from here, if let's say I wanna share my sales order details view, I'm gonna go ahead and select the check mark on the row for the view that I would like to share. And the first thing we're gonna do is publish it. By publishing it, this will allow it to be used across multiple users. Awesome, so publish as default view. Yep, this looks good. You can see here there's this little menu and yours might be minimized, so make sure to maximize it. But this publish to people in these roles, this is actually a really valuable screen and it's easy to navigate away from quickly. But if you wanna make sure to publish this view to um, let's say users who have the uh, office administration role or users who have the accounts receivable clerk role, this is where you would do that. So you can click on the add button and you can select from the available roles. And these roles are gonna be the same as the ones that you have available in the user list under system administration. And I said accounts receivable clerk, so we're just gonna go ahead and pick that one. This toggle here says include child roles. You can choose to include that or not. That just means any roles that exist underneath this role will also receive this view. For this example, I'm gonna leave that unchecked. And I'm also gonna make sure this only happens for this current legal entity. So then I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. Okay, you can see that message up here simply said that there may be a delay in seeing that view displayed to users with that role. I found that if you simply log out of the system and maybe close your browser and give it a few minutes, then it seems to work. Okay, so how to share um, or copy a saved view to individual users. 
So this is maybe if you have a single person who needs help with one particular view or you've made a custom view for them to use, but you don't want to share it to uh, a lot of people. So from here, similarly, we're going to find my personal view, which I've still got pulled up. So then I'm going to click copy to users. When I click copy to users, it's going to pull up all of the users in the system. And you can see you've got your email, the user ID and their name. And from here, you can simply select which users you want to share this role with. So we're going to go ahead and click this one and I'm going to click copy. So when I do this, you can see yet there's another message up here that's saying it's applying the personalization. And for this particular one, it's been completed. So the personalization was successfully applied to this user. It's also worth noting that you can share this role or excuse me, this view with multiple users at one time from that field. So to do that, you click copy to users and you would simply select multiple users. So for example, I can select four users here. So let's say you've gone through all this, you've got your, your views in place. Let's say you need to change the security roles um, that, that have been assigned a view. So how to change which security roles have a view. To do this, if you recall, we published our view and that's what allowed us to select the security role to apply our custom view to. So now we're gonna go up here to published views on the left-hand side. Under published views, we're gonna find our view name and it should have my initials in it because that's how I saved them. And you can see it's right here. Because I only published this one view, even though I had two personal views, this is the only one that shows up here. So we're going to click uh, on the row that we'd like to change, and we're going to go ahead and click republish. Republishing will allow you to change the security role that you assigned when you initially published your role. So you can select this and click remove, and we can click add and simply select another role. Let's say lease clerk in this case and it saves my other settings like which legal entity and also publishing as a, as a default view. And I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. And from here, it's gonna go ahead and save and tell you that it, it may take a little bit of time, but that the operation has been completed. Okay, that is how to customize roles, add fields and columns, and subsequently share them to other users who may need it or other uh, users who belong to certain security roles who may need these custom views. Roles are a super great way to um, make sure people have the information that they need, that it's easily accessible, that it can be quickly referenced so that people aren't spending a lot of time clicking around. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to us. You can find all of our information on our website and have a great day.